So to be honest with you, reviewing a DAC is a little more of a challenge than something like your everyday loudspeaker. Granted, the Denifrips Terminator and the May DAC were relatively straightforward simply because they represented significant advancements to anything that I had experienced before checking them out. After owning the Maydac now for a couple of years, I find myself in somewhat of a challenging position when it comes to reviewing the Sonnet Pasathea, but with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, challenge accepted. Before we crack the door open and shine a light on this little DAC, this guy, the Pasathea, and would you know it, a long list of fantastic audiophile goodies can be found in a place that you might not expect. No, I ain't talking about the fine folks at Safe and Sound this time. I'm actually pointing a finger at the one and only Audio Art Cable. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you didn't see that coming, did you? Sure, Audio Art Cable does indeed offer a plethora of great cables for every budget, but check this out, folks. They also offer amplifiers, stacks, turntables, headphones, music servers, and even speakers. That's right, folks, the days of AAC being just another cable company are long behind us, and they are now a one-stop shop for anything that your audiophile heart desires. So yeah, Take a minute, bookmark Audio Art Cable, and a massive thanks to AAC for sponsoring today's show. Remembering it like yesterday, hearing R2R or a ladder DAC for the very first time, it was like jumping into a refreshing swimming pool at the perfect temperature after working in the sun all day long. I don't know how to describe it better than that, and being a stubborn vinyl enthusiast for so many years, I really appreciated what I was hearing, and it was the first time that I actually felt like this sounds analog to me. So, getting this out of the way first, giving a minute for the trolls to hop on their little tricycles and start smashing their keyboards about hyperbole and all DAC sounding the same, this DAC, the Pasathea, sounds different, and it sounds fantastic. And a lot like the Maydac, but I do think there are some subtle differences in the presentation, and now that I think about it, both physical presentation and sonic presentation. Before delving into the reasons why you might consider integrating this $5,000 DAC into your audio setup, I'd like to discuss a couple of minor aspects that, given the hefty price tag, warrant some scrutiny. I recently posed a question on my community page on YouTube. If you're making a substantial investment in a component like a DAC, would aesthetics and functionality be important factors for you or would exceptional sound quality alone suffice? This leads me to the first observation that I must make for an honest and balanced review. In terms of build quality, this unit, at least in my humble opinion, doesn't inspire a great deal of confidence. While it has a decent appearance, it's only fair to draw a comparison to my very own Maydac, which not only delivers outstanding sound, but also boasts an exceptionally attractive design. Looking back in time, similar sentiment could be expressed about the Denifrips Terminator around that same price point as well. But this guy, this guy right here, I don't know, I just keep scratching my head. The steel chassis around the unit appears to be, I don't know, similar to the cages that we see in affordable hi-fi components all the time. Additionally, I noticed that on the rear, these RCA jacks, uh, they lean towards being, I don't know, like budget, hold on, like budget oriented. Okay, this is not a setup. So this right RCA jack is actually loose. It kind of illustrates exactly what I'm talking about is, in terms of just build quality and what you're getting, you know, for that kind of price. Now look, if this DAC were categorized as like a budget DAC or, I don't know, let's just say even under a thousand dollars, I wouldn't be chatting so much about this stuff. However, that's not the case here. This DAC costs north of $5,000. So 
Given the feedback from my poll and also my responsibility to provide an honest review, I would kindly ask Sonnet to take this as constructive criticism and consider it in the future designs of their products. Now, setting the nitpicking aside, the front faceplate, which appears to be made of aluminum, does look the part of a higher end product. The front buttons all have a sturdy and tactile feel, and the volume control operates smooth as butter. There's a convenient push button for navigating the menu system, particularly useful when making changes to the DAC settings, such as switching between fixed volume and using it as a preamp where you can adjust the volume with the front knob. Additionally, they include a remote control for source selection, volume adjustment, and muting the DAC, which is a welcome feature and it's like hefty steel. So no complaints about the remote at all. Taking a look at the business end of this unit, on the far left, we have an IEC inlet for power, remote switching jacks, USB optical, I2S via ethernet, AES and coaxial connections for digital inputs. Next to this bank, you'll find XLR and single-ended RCA jacks for connecting to your preamp or power amps, depending on how you would like to use this DAC in your system. Regarding to my listening experience with the Pasithea, I experimented with various setups, but the majority of my time was spent using the Galleon TS120 amplifier. I utilized my Inuos Zenith music server equipped with Rune, and for the most part, I paired it with the GR Research LGK 2.4 speakers, complemented by a couple of subwoofers to enhance the lower frequencies. And folks, this configuration yielded exceptional results. Hey, you couldn't see it coming You might have thought it But you couldn't change it Hey, it's not right or wrong It's about trying Find the sin When I say exceptional, you guys know that I'm not dorking around. I mean that the sound was incredibly refined and the vocal stood out as some of the smoothest that I have ever encountered. I believe the presence of tubes in the LGK driver and the 2.4 speakers contributed significantly to achieving a remarkably lush sounding mid-range. Moreover, it took me some time to piece it all together, but the Pasithea's smooth and refined sound profile played a pivotal role and we'll get more into that in just one second. Before we dive in deeper, I'd like to discuss something briefly. When we talk about the performance of a DAC, it's important to understand the difference between two aspects, bandwidth and resolution. Bandwidth refers to the range of frequencies a DAC should be able to reproduce without any problem, while resolution deals with the level of detail it can deliver and how it delivers it. Or to be even more clear, how it sounds when delivering it. Now, when somebody, a reviewer, or anybody starts raving about a particular DAC's performance, often emphasizing something like, oh, how much bass it has, or how much mid-range that it has, I gotta admit, I tend to lose interest, and that's not what I'm gonna be talking about. It's not meant as any kind of disrespect. They're certainly gonna be able to hear whatever they wanna hear and tell you about all that, but in my honest experience, the differences between DACs are, hear me, never, ever found in their bandwidth performance. So for me, the real game changer, or the difference is, is gonna be in resolution or the level of detail that a DAC can provide and how it sounds when it provides it. Beyond that, I might also pick up subtle differences that make one DAC sound more analog-like than the other. Last, I don't wanna generalize and say that only R2R DACs achieve this analog-like sound because that's not true at all. 
in my reviewing journey, I've spent a lot of time with a handful of DACs of all different types and topologies, and it seems that while some sound more analog than others, I've just had the best luck with R2R or ladder DACs in that particular category. Now, as much as I would like to tell you when swapping the Maydac out for the Pasithea, or vice versa, that something incredibly profound happened, either good or bad, I gotta be honest, that would be a lie. The truth is, I didn't hear much, if any difference at all, for the first week of getting used to the Pasithea. That is to say, in every single category, folks, the Pasithea seemed to mimic and trace many of the positive attributes of the Maydac, and not once did I notice anything worthy of even jotting down as notes for this review. Determined to figure this out, I dedicated more time in the following weeks to continuously compare and analyze. Taking a break from the review, the new owners from Spatial Audio visited for a couple of days, delivering the latest X4 revisions, and at one point, even without consciously considering it, we swapped the DAX, replacing the Pasithea with the May, and it was during this unintentional switch that I finally managed to catch onto one specific difference between the DAX. And from there, it started to unfold and unravel. So, here it is. The key differences that I started to peel back were elements like air, decay, and where harmonics reside. In my perception, the Pasithea appeared to offer a slightly more relaxed rendition of this content compared to the Maydac. For instance, when listening to The Panther by Jennifer Warnes, a track that begins with chimes, wood blocks, and other intriguing percussion, I noticed this distinction in the decay structure of each instrument. As I continued to catch these differences, it became apparent that the Maydac seemed to highlight that final bit of resolution at the peak, whereas the Pasithea appeared content with a smoother, more refined presentation. While the difference in time domain information was the most apparent distinction between the Pasithea and the Maydac, I also delved deeper into the other subtle nuances throughout the midband. The Pasithea's presentation of mid-range frequencies displayed a touch, and I mean like a touch more warmth, lending a slightly more inviting and mellow character to especially vocal performances. On the other hand, the Maydac seemed to excel in the precision and separation of instruments within complex harmonics and overtones, especially on top. Listening to a large orchestra piece like Pines of Rome, the May's ability to articulate individual instruments' harmonics within the symphony was a noteworthy highlight. Conversely, the Pasithea's rendering provided a cohesive and perhaps richer sounding performance, and again, perhaps with a touch less analytical precision. These distinctions, although subtle, that's the key word, subtle, began to paint a clear picture of each DAX sonic personality. Last, I couldn't overlook the nuances in lower frequencies either, especially in the realm of bass texture and tone. The Maydac revealed tight and controlled bass with exceptional detail. The thump of a kick drum or the rumble of a bass guitar was characterized by the precision that bordered on tactile. It felt like you could almost reach out and touch the strings vibrating. In contrast, the Pasithea showcased a more rounded bass presentation. Again, while very subtle and hard to notice without really focusing, it added a sense of warmth and weight to the low end. So, depending on your musical tastes and preferences, this could be exactly what you are looking for if you decide to hit the checkout button for the Pasithea. The journey of reviewing the Sonnet Pasithea has been indeed a tough nut to crack. As the chapters unfolded, it became evident that this review absolutely needed to be more of a compare and contrast in order to peel back what this Pasithea is really going to offer if you decide to grab one. For the initial week of use, the Pasithea appeared to seamlessly mimic many of the positive attributes of the Maydac, leaving me without any noteworthy differences to report. And you know what? To this very day, it still mimics many 
many of the great attributes of the May DAC. It's a really good sounding DAC. However, as I delved deeper into the subtle intricacies that hear me define high-end audio, the Pasithea began to reveal its unique character. It was during an unintentional switch with the Maydac that I finally recognized a specific distinction in the realm of air, decay, and harmonics. The Pasithea offers a slightly more relaxed rendition compared to the Maydac, creating a smoother, more refined presentation. These differences extended into the mid-range frequencies where the Pasithea introduced a touch of warmth, enhancing the mellow character of vocal performances. In contrast, the Maydac excelled in precision and instrument separation, which was evident in complex orchestral compositions. The two DACs, while subtle in their variations, painted distinct sound profiles. And last, the lower frequencies revealed even more nuggets worth chatting about, with the Maydac delivering tight and controlled bass with exceptional detail, while the Pasithea added a subtle touch of warmth and weight to the low end, contributing to a round bass presentation. Either way you slice this audiophile bread, the Sonnet Pasithea is one heck of a DAC and you should put it on your short list to audition, especially for those of you who are looking for something smooth and refined, and you are willing to trade some detailed information in exchange for that sound profile. And with that, I will see you DAC loving audiophiles in the next video. Oh, you were a tough one, but I got you. I got you figured out. I got you figured out.